And the apostles said to Jesus, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to the mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted in the sea. And it would obey you. Well, God bless you today. This is Pastor Danny Johnson, Zion Christian Center. Welcome to another Victory Through Faith broadcast. Today, I want to share with you some interesting facts and thoughts from the Word of God concerning increasing your faith, how to increase your faith. Um, here in Luke 17, verse 5, and the apostle said to Jesus, increase our faith. Praise God. Uh, well, we're so glad you're tuning in this morning. We pray that the word of the Lord is going to be a blessing to you today as we deal with this most important subject uh, of faith. And I believe this is one of the most important subjects to know and to study as a child of God. So we're going to be sharing some very, very thoughtful uh, faith facts. And we believe uh, you're going to be challenged by the word this morning. You're going to be blessed by the word this morning because God wants you to increase your faith. Amen. And if you have faith, Jesus said, you can say, or as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the root and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Um, well, very interesting thought there by our, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, because he began to tell them that it wasn't just the, the quantity of your faith, but also the quality of your faith that you could actually speak to things and they would obey you. Now, of course, that's spoken word faith. And that's uh, that's not what we're going to be focusing on this morning, because right now we want to focus on increasing our faith. Well, of course, the, the Bible um, has much to say about this subject. As a matter of fact, uh, Romans 12 and 3 remind us that every born again person has been giving given the measure of faith. Amen. You have the measure of faith. Romans 12 and 3 um, declares that for I say through the grace given to me to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to everyone a measure of faith. Praise God, a measure of faith. The moment you was born again, you were given a measure of faith. But secondly, what I want you to understand this morning is you must do something to develop your faith. All right. To develop or grow your faith, uh, you must feed or build it on the word. OK, you must feed and build it on the word. And as we uh, continue to move through this particular teaching, uh, one of the ways you'll find that you'll increase your faith is through hearing the word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Uh, thirdly, uh, faith, of course, it doesn't come by having heard. It's come by hearing. So you must constantly hear the word of God. And you'll find that also um, in the book of Romans, in the book of Romans, uh, chapter 10 and verse number 17. Now, if you have your Bibles this, today, you can follow along with me. Uh, Romans 10 and 17, and, and it declares, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, it's important we understand that everything you hear, not everything you hear builds faith in your life. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It is the word of God amen, that builds faith in your life. Very important. We understand that. So faith must be in two places for it to work for you. Number one, it must be in your heart. And secondly, it must be in your mouth. It must be in your heart and it must be in your mouth. And you'll also find this in Romans chapter 10. <laughs> We're on the Romans road today. Praise God. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8 familiar passage of scripture the bible says but what does it say the word is near you in your mouth and in your heart in your mouth and in your heart that is the word of faith which we preach that if you confess with your mouth the lord jesus 
and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Praise God. For with the heart, here we go, the heart one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Very important. And we all understand, amen, Romans 10 and 8, this is how you got born again. Praise God. You believed it in your heart and you confessed it with your mouth. And this is how faith works. It's in two places today. It's in your heart and it's in your mouth. You know, your faith will never rise above your confession. Praise God. So it must be in your heart and you must speak it out of your mouth. Um, also, we see it here that faith is a spiritual law. Uh, that will work for whoever uh, works it in their life. And you find that in Romans also chapter three and verse 27. Amen. Faith is a spiritual law. Now, uh, let me give you some other interesting uh, thoughts about faith. You can have faith and not know it. You can also have faith and know that you have it, but not know how to use it. Also, you can know you have faith and know how to use it, but not use it. Praise God. And the Bible tells us this in Romans 1 and 17. For in it is the for in the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, I use this term um, using your faith. But uh, in, in some regards, uh, you do need to know how to use your faith. But also the Bible declares in Romans 7, 1 and 17, that the just, those that have been justified, made righteous, amen, by God, uh, shall live by faith. So it's not only something you use, it's something you live by, amen. The just must live by faith faith okay and um surely your faith will be tested okay your faith will be tested and this is why amen we need to understand the purpose of tests and these things help our faith many times to grow okay help our faith to grow so the bible tells us without faith you cannot please god of course that's hebrews 11 and 6 uh, the bible tells us also in hebrews 4 and 2 that we profit by the word that is preached of course that was the children of israel the bible says that the the word was not mixed with faith in those that heard it all right uh, Hebrews 6 and 12 said through faith we inherited we inherit the promises of God and then also the Bible says when we pray amen we must pray in faith according to James chapter 1 verse 5 through 8 because if we pray in doubt we pray in unbelief he said let not that man think that he shall receive anything from the Lord and of course, um, this is a scripture I quote often, 1 John 5 and 4, that, that declares, Whosoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, uh, and you know, and I want to encourage you this morning that there are times in our lives when we need to go the extra, uh, we need an extra measure of faith to get us to the next level God wants to take us in order to reveal his will to us in a greater way. Glory be to God. And this righteousness of God is walking in the revealed will of God. There's some things that God wants to reveal to you concerning faith and many times i often say that we need a revelation for our situation and god has a, another level of of insight and understanding and wisdom that he desires to reveal to you and high now of course this 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 greater level this next level god wants to take us to uh, we see this happen to abraham when god asked him to sacrifice his son isaac OK, it happened to Job when he lost everything he had, including his health. It happened to Noah when he was asked to 
build the ark. I'm sure Noah say, said, God, I need a greater level of faith, amen, to be obedient in this particular assignment. Amen. It happened to Joseph when he was thrown into prison. It happened to Moses when he led the children of Israel across the Red Sea. As a matter of fact, when Moses approached the Red Sea, he began to pray to God because he didn't know what to do. Uh, he began to think in his mind that God had brought them to this place, this what we would see as a dead end to be destroyed by their enemies. And he began to cry out to God because he said, God, I need a greater level or a greater revelation of faith of what it is you would have me to do. And God began to tell Moses, amen, what is that in your hand? Now, in other words, um, I'm asking you the same question this morning. What is that that's in your hand? hand. Uh, many times we're praying for things that we already possess. And God says, listen, utilize the faith, amen, that you have been given. Exercise the faith that you have already been given. So he said to Moses, Moses, take your rod and stretch it out. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Bible, well, you know the story. Amen. The Bible said they walked across on dry land. Move these people forward, God told Moses. It also happened to Joshua when he was told to encircle Jericho for seven days. You know, that didn't sound like much of a battle strategy. Amen. But in the plan and in the wisdom of God, uh, you know, God would do things totally different than you and I. And that was his strategy, amen, to win the battle. It happened to Elijah when he challenged the prophets of Baal. It happened to Daniel when he was placed in the den with the lions. How many know, praise God, that'll make you cry for greater faith. Glory to God. It happened to Stephen when he's, he was being stoned to death. It happened to Paul during his many hardships and imprisonment. Uh, and it happens to you and me at various times and in various seasons in our lives. So what do all these great heroes of faith have in common? Uh, um, what were some of the key factors that enabled them to step out in great faith? Praise God. Well, these are some of the things I'm talking to you about this morning. Amen. We, we need some major keys um, to great faith and how to increase Amen. Our faith. And so uh, once again, this is uh, Pastor Danny Johnson, Don Christian Center. We're so glad you, you're tuning in this morning. If you're just tuning in, of course, we're talking to you about some vital keys, some major keys to great faith or as we've already read, according to our Luke 17 and five, when the disciples said to Jesus, increase our faith. Amen. Increase our faith and the amount of faith is not as important as the quality or the measure. I mean, the quality of our faith, praise God. And so let me just say this uh, from the offset that, uh, you know, great faith or true faith really begins with relationship with God. Amen. We're relationship with God. You must have relationship with God to truly understand um, faith uh, because it's born out of that relationship. Okay. It's born out of that relationship. You can't have faith. You can have trust in someone uh, that you do not know. You do not have relationship with. Um, a great example of that is Enoch. Amen. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Amen. He walked with God and was not. Enoch had great faith because he walked in habitual fellowship with God. Amen. And so your faith grows according to your relationship with God. It can increase, but it can also decrease. Okay. It can increase, but it can also decrease. So I want to encourage 
uh, the listeners this morning, guys, be more concerned with your relationship with God than with the promises of God. Amen. Because the promises are based on condition. But as you walk in relationship with God, if you love God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, praise God, then it will align you with the kingdom of God and position you um, to receive and walk in it everything that God has for you. And we know Jesus himself is the author and the finisher of our faith. And so our relationship with God determines our level of faith because when you know God better, you can trust him more. Hallelujah. Can I say that again? When you know God better, you can trust him more. Amen. It's easy to trust him with his promise. Praise God. Now, you know, we thank God for faith, but it doesn't just come by developing, uh, uh, just performing these mental exercises of just repeating scriptures. That's not what I'm talking about. Amen. Uh, you know, a man can say he have faith, but the Bible says faith without works is dead. Amen. Faith without works is dead. And so faith can also be information amen or a word that we receive from god and that we act upon it you know the bible lets us know that my sheep hear my voice and so as god continually speak we continually hear the faith comes by hearing amen our relationship with god continues to grow and 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 i want to encourage you amen wait to hear from god about every situation in your life amen wait to hear from god Wait to hear from God. If you want your faith to work better, start hearing from God, listening to the Holy Spirit. OK, listen to the Holy Spirit. He will reveal what God desires to do in you, through you and for you. He will lead you and he will guide you into all truth. Praise God. And so once again, all of the Bible is the word of God and the word from God. Uh, uh, but how much of it is alive and real to you? That's what makes the difference. Because there is the logos, the written word, but also there is the rhema, amen, which is the right now word, the preceding word that comes to us from God concerning any situation that we may be facing in our life. Praise God. Amen. God is good today. And I want to encourage you. Amen. You may be facing some challenges this morning and you may be dealing with uh, your faith being tested. And I just want to, you, to encourage you this morning to rise up in your authority and in the faith of God that he's already placed on the inside of you. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm, 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 I'm calling to remembrance the time when Jesus told his disciples, let's go over to the other side. And just when they were moving to the other side, uh, the Bible says a great storm arose. Amen. And Jesus was asleep on the boat. Praise God. And disciples began to panic. They didn't know what to do. Uh, fear began to fill their heart and they began to cry to the master. They said, master, don't you care? Do you care that we perish? You know, can't you see what we're dealing with? And of course, Jesus rebuked the storm. Amen. And he also rebuked the disciples and he asked them a question. Where is your faith? Amen. Where is your faith? Uh, and so I want to encourage you today. Amen. Begin to speak to those storms, those mountains, those giants, those challenges that you're facing today, praise God, because God is saying, okay, you're praying to me, but he's asking you, where is your faith? You know, what have you placed your faith in? Of course, in Matthew chapter 11, 23, uh, I'm sorry, verse 22, uh, Jesus encourages us to have faith in God, have faith in God. Amen. God bless you. Well, you know, in Luke 18, Jesus said something very interesting as well. Amen. He says, I tell you 
that he will avenge them speedily. Praise God. And this was the parable of the persistent widow. Of course, the whole parable is talking about faith. So, of course, if you desire, you can read Luke, the 18th chapter, verses one through eight. And in the eighth verse, he makes this statement. He said, nevertheless, when the son of man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Amen. When the son of man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? Amen. And you say, well, uh, I got faith and I know people that got faith. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if, 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 if the faith we're talking about is the same faith that he's talking about. He said, will I find faith on the earth? And I'm talking about biblical faith. I'm talking about Abrahamic faith. Uh, amen. Uh, and I'm talking about the God kind of faith. He said, will I find faith on the earth? And, and God wants us to have not just little faith, not just small faith, not just no faith. He wants us to have great faith. Amen. He wants you and I to be strong in faith. Okay. So remember what I said, faith never grows beyond your confession. And, and when you begin to speak a thing, these spoken words, they program your spirit for faith or fear, failure or success, victory or defeat, blessings or curses, life and death. So remember, faith is a seed. All right. Faith is a seed. Seeds become plants or trees. They're sown in weakness, but they rise in power. Amen. And nothing can stop that seed from pushing upward, pushing forward. Praise God. And your faith, your faith will push through uh, whatever challenge you're facing this morning. Your faith in God will take on the nature of the miracle working power and will break through any obstacle that may be standing in your way today. Praise God. Any obstacle standing in your way today. Praise God. And once again, this is Pastor Danny Johnson. And we want to encourage you to, uh, amen, uh, just, just pray for us. Uh, visit us at uh, 2850 Virgilina Road here in Roxborough, um, Zion Christian Center. Also, you can check us out on the web at zionchristiancenter.net. And uh, also uh, Facebook and Twitter. And uh, you can also check out some messages, some encouraging things there on our Facebook page that I believe would be a blessing to you also on YouTube um, as well. And so we thank and praise God for you. We thank and praise God for the word of God because it's our desire to just get the word out. Amen. And be a blessing uh, to people. Amen. Be a blessing to people. I believe man's greatest need uh, in this hour, amen, is to know God, um, to know his word and to begin to fellowship uh, with God. Amen. And walk in great faith. And, and, and perhaps you don't know him today. Let me encourage you. Let me encourage you this morning, you know, in the in the midst of so much uncertainty and men's hearts are felling them for fear. I want to encourage you today that the safest place on the planet to be is in the will of God. Amen. If you are not in the will of God, maybe you're backsliding. Maybe you're walking in bitterness and anger and unforgiveness. Maybe you're dealing with church hurt or maybe you're dealing with a relational hurt or you've been wounded or scarred or bruised and you've walked away from God or, or, or maybe you just don't know God at all. You're angry at God. You're mad at God because of your life circumstances and, and where you find yourself. Well, let me encourage you this morning. Praise God. God is a God of reconciliation. Amen. And he will restore you. He will restore you. He will redeem you. Praise God. Everything the enemy has stolen from you. Praise God. You can get it back. God has an amazing plan and purpose for your life. There's a treasure in you. There's giftings in you. Amen. People, uh, the people need things that are on the inside of you and God wants to touch you and change you and help you and strengthen you. Amen. If you would allow him, all you have to do is surrender yourself to God and say, God, here I am. God, 
take my life. God, change me. Lord, strengthen me, help me, deliver me, heal me. God, I'm, I, I am, I'm bound. I'm stuck. But God, I, I want to be free. I want to be liberated. I need to be transformed by your power. And, uh, and I surrender myself to you. Amen. Come into my heart. Come into my life and do that that only you can do. And, and listen to me. Praise God. Listen to me. God will hear your prayer. Amen. When you humbly submit yourself to him, he will hear your prayer. Get established in a good church where the word of God is being preached. Listen, that is one of the keys to your faith growing. Amen. You must, uh, once again, get under the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right. So, so, so important that we understand that. Okay. And, you know, your faith will not be able to increase if you do not understand who you are in Christ. Um, This will simply stagnate your growth. It will stagnate your growth. If you don't know who you are in Christ, uh, you'll find yourself stagnating because you you will not be able to walk in the confidence, amen, of God in your life. All right. So you, you, you want to make sure you know who you are and you want to make sure you're under good Bible teaching. Amen. Ministry where the word of faith is being taught, but not just taught, but also demonstrated. All right. Demonstrate it because, you know, you have to be under a gift to receive a gift. And and we go from faith to faith and glory to glory. So you must continue to grow. You must continue to grow. Uh, God does not want your spiritual life to be stagnant. Amen. He has more for us. Paul said, made this statement. I die daily. In other words, Paul was saying, amen, the more I die to myself, the more the power of God comes on me, the more understanding and wisdom and and the more I go from faith to faith and from glory to glory and I'm I'm getting brighter and brighter. I'm getting stronger and stronger. Uh, God is we're getting closer and closer and amen. And I'm 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 accomplishing more in a day than I used to used to take me a month because God is in control. Amen. God is working in me and God is working through me. Praise God. Now, um, I know we're coming on to, to, to the end of the broadcast. So I want to encourage you to please. Amen. I would love to invite you out to a uh, uh, and to join us in live worship anytime. Amen. 2850 Virgin Line Road, uh, 11 a.m. Sunday morning worship service. Amen. Come and be a part. We would love to meet you. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. We thank you so much. We love you and we appreciate your heart for God. Amen. For for the kingdom of God, for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the word of God. So important. Okay. And uh, so once again, uh, I tell you what, uh, the Bible in Second Thessalonians 1 and 3 talks about uh, exceedingly growing faith. And God wants your faith to grow, not just he don't want you to just have little faith and weak faith. He wants you to have strong faith. So uh, we're going to pick this up again next week because I got about seven major keys to great faith. And of course, first Timothy six and 12 says this fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life. The only fight that God is asking you and me to fight is the good fight of faith. And the fight is always to stay in faith. Amen. Stay in faith. Let me encourage you this morning to stay in faith. You said, well, uh, I'm having some financial issues and things aren't looking good. Stay in faith. Uh, Well, I got an evil report from the doctor. Amen. And the diagnosis and the prognosis is, is not good. Stay in faith. Amen. Because the enemy comes to pull you. If he can separate me from my faith, then he can defeat me every time. Praise God. So stay in faith this morning. Be encouraged. God loves you. Amen. Press in to the word of God. Read it. Study it. Meditate on it. Memorize it. Meditate on it. Guys, amen. Get filled 
with the word of God. Amen. Get filled with the word of God. Amen. We love you. God bless you. Have an awesome day. Amen. Continue to walk with God. And remember, praise God, to that God wants to continually increase your faith. So make that confession. I am growing in faith. I am becoming strong in faith. Amen. And I walk by faith and not by sight. God bless you.